Hello, 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 and welcome to another edition of Espresso Jams. And I am here today with Anastasia Lipsky, and she is a wonderful businesswoman, and she helps people with their visibility. We'll get into what all that means. Welcome to the show, Anastasia. Thank you, thank you, thank you. It's so great to be here. It, it's great to have you on the show. And just for information, where do you hail from today? I am currently in Corvallis, Oregon. You're listening to Espresso Jam. Short, concentrated, delicious conversations about business, technology, and entrepreneurship. If you're just starting out on your business adventure or you're a seasoned business professional, I'm sure you'll find value in these short conversations. Espresso Jams is brought to you by Apexable, providing the tools, insights, and transformative structures to help you reach your business summit. I'm your host, Joe Matz. Let's get started. I've spent most of my life in Petaluma, California, so I moved up here recently, um, raised in Hawaii, until the age of 14, spent two years in Wisconsin, from went from Hawaii to Wisconsin, and then pretty much Northern California since then, so. Wow, so so from beautiful Hawaii, summer all year long is what we hear on the main <laughs> coast here on mainland, yes. to the cold, one of the coldest areas in the U.S. <laughs> in October, we moved in October. I had never seen snow in my life. Oh my yeah. god. And, and and I spoke a different language. It was so interesting. Culturally, it was so different, especially, you know, we're talking back in the early 70s. You know, so kids would ask me if I literally asked me if we lived in a grass shack. They would ask me if we had TVs. Because it was just <laughs> Hawaii was so foreign to so many, at least to youth. You know, adults, they kind of had it going on. But the kids, they only had Hawaii 5 to go by. So, you know, <laughs> It was it was a it was a very different world. There were words that I used that I didn't know that they were Hawaiian because they were just part of our language, right. you know. So you know, it was a interesting thing. But I do believe it's part of what shaped me into someone who I can be very um, flexible, if you will, in in situations and with people because I needed to in order to get by. Absolutely. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, I know something about that with living in Italy and living in Brazil. Yeah. You've got uh, to be flexible yeah. and you've got to, you've got to take on personal responsibility for communication. Absolutely. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So now when you moved here or in Hawaii, was there any indication that you would eventually own your own business? Never. You didn't I sell lemonade mm -hmm. on the side of the street or anything? Nope. <laughs> no, not, nope, nope, not at all. Not at all. I, what I, what I've learned kind of after the fact, when I started into this business, cause I didn't intend to do this. This just like God led me down this path and it fell on my lap. When, when I reflect back and I realize that I've been preparing for this all this time, part of it was that I realized that within the corporate environment where I worked for 30 years, uh, with it all being in tourism, mostly luxury tourism, I was known uh, from the work that I did with international ground operators. And I realized I was an entrepreneur. Mm. And I didn't even know what that was. I didn't even know what an entrepreneur was when I was working corporately. But I certainly didn't understand entrepreneur because I, in essence, created my position. You know, oftentimes, I, I mean, I remember one of the cruise lines that I worked for in that time period, I had five different bosses. They just kept moving me around because they didn't quite know what to do with me. So I, I you know, and then I started with the company that I, I spent the most time with that I, I think I, I'm most aligned with and, and was most known for and kind of created that position as well. So it's always doing things, stepping out of the box. Uh, I was known as the queen of workarounds which, uh, you know, I remember, you know, one of the head people saying, like, I don't know whether to, you know, praise you or slap you because it's so frustrating that you keep finding these loopholes and trying to work around them in our systems. And yet you're exposing things that we could be doing differently and better. So I've always just had that mindset. It's just the way that I worked. So I I started helping these international ground operators be more visible. Yeah. Because I saw that they needed to do that. They were humble 
people. And these are the people that that basically when you go to other countries, they're the ones that take care of you. So a lot of times when people travel, they will go through a tour operator. Well, they'll go through a travel agent, okay? Sure. The travel agent will turn around and use a tour operator who goes out and they reach out and they connect with all these different operators, in essence, suppliers, and they pull together a package, a, an experience for their clients. I was helping people to bypass that and to go direct to the people on the ground, boots on the ground. So like they would be the people in Brazil, they would be the people in Italy, and this was their culture. These were the they they were the ones that took care of you from the moment you got to the airport and and rolled out the red carpet because I worked in high, high, high end luxury tourism. Um, you know, if you wanted to have chai with a Maharaja, you could do that through my connections because they were friends. You know, it was just that kind of an experience. And so these people, as amazing as their experiences were, they didn't know how to sell themselves. They were service providers, but they didn't know how to get people to understand what they did and why it was so different. And so I just started helping them yeah. and, and found that I was good at it and was able to support them in that way. And so that's part of that, that building up, if you will, to who I am and what I do when I consult with my clients. You know, I help them with their visibility. I help them to be seen so that in my case, what I'm helping people to do is so that they're seen, so they get booked to speak or get booked on a podcast at, so that they can guest and use that as a marketing. So it all kind of starts there. All kind of starts there. Very I never different. thought I would have done it. Very different when you started without the internet and, and without oh, yeah. podcast and, <laughs> and folks on the ground. And I've done some of those tours, some of those high-end tours, staying in $500, $600 a night hotels. And it mm -hmm. was wonderful because they took care of us. Yes. And I've also done yes. the do it yourself. I don't know where I'm staying tonight, but I'm going to get up and ride my bicycle and stop wherever I stop and find I a place to it. sleep. I, I've done both of those. Love yeah, them both. Yeah, yeah. They're, they're both awesome. So that got you started in, in helping folks become more visible. Mm -hmm. And that led into your business today. Right. And how did that start? How did you get involved with, <laughs> with promoting that would podcasting be and all of that? 2008. So I'm going along my merry old way in tourism, and I I had been wooed away from that company that that I my my real heart was with. I I was wooed away and was working for another tourism company, a travel agency actually, and I I decided to end my contract with them. I'd never been unemployed. I, I knew the movers and shakers in the industry because these are my people, you know, that this is just who I who I worked with. They were my, my colleagues. And so I decided to not continue with that company. That was April of 2008. So I started reaching out to presidents of cruise lines saying, hey, you know, free agent here. I would love to work for your company. And they'd come back and say, oh, we would hire you in a heartbeat. We just laid 50 people off yesterday. Hmm. 2008, just horrifically slammed. Those of tourism. us who lived through that know. Yes. Okay. So, and, and how many entrepreneurs were born as a result of yeah. 2008, right? So there I am, unemployed for the first time in my life. I sent out more than 1,000 resumes in a course of two years. Now, granted, I was looking for work in tourism. OK, uh, and, and I also was not relocatable because I had three kids at that point, you know, so so that that does cut into some options. But still, you would think I would have gotten something in the midst of that. I started delving into social media and in particular, I got excited about Twitter. So I got really involved in Twitter uh, that, you know, in the earlier days of Twitter, when we would have tweet ups, you know, so for those of you who are listening who don't know what a tweet up is. At that point, in those days of Twitter, everything was, this was still new, this idea of connecting with people virtually. Sure. And so others, these naysayers would say, oh, you don't have deep connections. You know, this is this is superficial. All you guys do is talk about what you had for lunch. No, I knew, I knew the, the power that this had. And so we would start to get together. So in different towns, we would have tweet ups. So in Petaluma, Petaluma, California, 
there was part of people that we would say, hey, let's do a tweet up and we would get together. We well, get together physically. Physically. Offline. We would get together. Okay. So we all knew each other's handles and and we would come together and we would meet somewhere physically so that we could connect. Hmm. And I I went to a tweet up from a gal who was a farmer. She had just started a sustainable farm in Petaluma. She invited, you know, anybody who wanted to come. And so I brought my whole family and we connected. In fact, she hired my 16 year old daughter and her best friend who were visiting uh, because she was tired of her boys who didn't know how to work around the farm. She liked the spirit of my girl, my my, my girl and her best friend. And she's like, girls, do you want to work for me? Because I can't handle my sons anymore. And so she literally hired them. Next thing I know, she hires my other daughter. She hired my future son-in-law. And then ultimately, because remember, I'm unemployed. So she hired me just part time to help her with some sales and marketing. So I did that for a moment. Meanwhile, there's a gal who has a social media conference in Petaluma. I wanted to go, but I was broke as a joke because at that point that the work that I did for the farm had stopped. So now I'm unemployed again and I want to go. So I messaged this gal who's putting on this conference and I say, hey, I have event management experience. I would love to help you out. I'll volunteer, work your, your conference if you give me a free ticket. Once she found out what I had done, because that tourism world that I had, Part of what I did was event management. I used to put on these very elaborate events around the world. And I was known for putting on an event at the Bellagio every year with at least 800 people, international people, lavish event over the top. So I had I had a lot of experience in that world. I, I so love how basically, you, you integrate the entrepreneurial spirit without even knowing you were integrating the I, entrepreneurial spirit. I had spirit. no idea. Figuring no idea. out a way to get things done, even if you don't yes. have the monetary resources and bartering right. service yes. for service. Yeah. That's yes, awesome. yes, that's yes. Great. So once she found out I had that experience, she's like, you know what? Can I hire you? Which was a good thing because there were she had never put on a conference before. Mm-hmm. And I came in in the 11th hour and there were a lot of things that she had missed. So I was able to save her, you know what, and help her turn that around. Well, then I was vetting speakers for her next conference. So I was on the other end of that. So it's like this this social media, jumping to a sustainable farm, having that that connection there, she gets me this other job. So now the interesting thing is, so I'm doing this social media conference work and then walked away from that job after a while. And then my my farmer comes back to me because I'm unemployed again. And she's like, hmm, So my business coach told me that I should be speaking to grow my business. I don't know where to begin. I will pay you for every gig you can get from me. You know everybody in town. I can't deal with this. Will you do it? And I'm one of those people, you know, I'll do anything once, twice if I like it. I was unemployed. (laughs) If somebody's willing to pay me for something, sure. sure. So I just started reaching out to rotary clubs and chambers and various networking groups and asking them if they wanted to have this sustainable farmer come in and do a talk. And she wasn't um she wasn't pitching anything. She she was educating people about sustainable agriculture. And then she would invite them to her farm. People would come out to her farm, they'd take a tour. And then when they saw, did the tour, they fell in love with their operation and what she did and how she treated the animals and the quality of the, the food that she produced. And then they became CSA members, Community Sustained Agriculture. For, the, for anybody who doesn't understand that, that's when you're basically saying, I'm going to get a box of meats and vegetables you know, on a monthly or a, in her case, it was a weekly basis. So weekly basis, these people would sign up to get meats and vegetables. It averaged $240 a month. In a six-month period of me booking her, she had 52 families come out and tour the farm that were a direct court, direct relationship to the talks that she did. And those are only the ones that filled out the survey. Of those, 14 became members. So it was her number one marketing tool. Yeah. And she, in essence, told everybody she knew. And she said, you should be doing this for other people. 
So to this day, 12 years after the fact, every single client that I have has come to me through word of mouth, through referral, because what I do is unique. There, there really are not agencies out there that represent people who speak for free to grow their business. So it's a unique model. A traditional uh, speaker agent is going to take 20 to 30 percent of the honorarium or speaker fee that they get on behalf of their client. Mm -hmm. Well, my clients are speaking for free. So They're there's no honorarium. Rotary clubs. There's none. No. So they pay me for every engagement that I book them for, but they're pulling that from their marketing budget because they know that if they get up in front of a group of people and they share their passion and expertise, they do it with integrity to bless, not pitch, they're going to have a certain amount of people that are going to resonate with them and they're going to want some of what they've got. So your so model that's what is, I do. Your model is very different than what I've seen before, whereas agents and can I call you a speaker's agent? I am. Yes. Okay. I've seen yeah. speaker agents that will charge a fixed fee every month. Mm -hmm. And that that could be for for a certain number of gigs. Or there right. could be an additional fee per gig, but it's kind of like a retainer fee, is right, what I've right. seen. You've you've blown that model up. Yeah, it's totally they they pay me on production. On production. Only if I get them booked. Okay. And I let them choose first. So that's also something, especially in the podcast agency world, that apparently is very unique. I'm not running into that very often. Um, yeah, I, I mean, so far, I mean, I've met a lot of podcast agencies and everyone that I've spoken to, they charge a a substantial monthly fee. And then they book their clients on podcasts, but they don't run the podcast by the client first to see if they want to be on the show. So they they do their due diligence though and they know you know the types of shows that the clients want to get on, et cetera, which we do too. But you can know something, but you don't really know, in my opinion, and I'm going to suggest that to anybody who's listening right now who is using podcast guesting to grow your business, I feel it is imperative that you listen to the show before you even ask to be on it. Oh, my because... gosh. I'm so glad you said that because I I say the same thing. No, yeah. I now, I help people do it in a DIY basis. Now, I uh, got it. Okay, so I'll, I'll teach folks how to find the show, how to contact, what to say to the show host, and yeah. how to follow up, how to have a call to action, um, how to get your message across. It's a, it's a lot of work because it's a DIY fashion. Right. Now, right. some of those folks, they, they say, hey, Joe, that's, um, that's really awesome stuff. I don't want to do that. <laughs> I'd yep. like someone to do it for me. Yep. I, I don't do that. So they would yeah. be a great client for you. Would you like to get in front of more of your ideal clients and at the same time, build your brand and create evergreen content? Well, you can do that with podcast guesting. This very moment, you're listening to a podcast that may have been published today or three weeks ago or three years ago. In a very real sense, you're engaging with the speakers, hopefully enjoying yourself and learning something new at the same time. And you're getting to know the guests and how they help their clients, their customers, and the problems that they solve. You may even be their ideal client and want to learn more about them and download one of their free resources you can find in the show notes or maybe even become a client of theirs. See, when you're a guest on a podcast, you will enjoy that same kind of engagement. It is perhaps the easiest, most cost-effective way to get in front of new audiences. Learn how you can be a guest on the right podcast and engage with your ideal clients with the free resources available at gapologist.com. Absolutely, absolutely. You know, it's not rocket science. Okay, right. it's not rocket science, but it it's grunt work. Yes. And that whole e-myth mentality, we are to stick to our brilliance and outsource anything we possibly can. That's how we can be most effective. Does it make sense for a person to be doing it themselves 
where they can have someone who not only can take it off their plate, but someone who already has the connections too. Absolutely. So we have a black book that we work with, you know, as with you, you know, once, once we start working with the show, then, and they're impressed with the caliber of our clients because we only represent people who are really good. It would be the kiss of death to my business if I represented who was someone who wasn't a great speaker or they were a terrible guest, right? Sure. So when you work with us already, you know all of our clients are carefully vetted because I've got a lot riding on this. So, so there's that aspect of it. But once we do bring someone in, then they're far more likely to say, yes, who else do you have? Who else can you send your way? So keeping in mind that this was all speaking that I was booking for people for, you know, the first 10 years, basically, that, that aspect of it, you know, I, I booked, I personally booked more than 1600 speaking engagements and podcasts now for my clients. So I got a lot of experience. I have a really good black book in in the speaking world for free, free gigs. Okay, I want to clarify, I'm not booking paid engagements for my clients. So this is a very different niche. So let's let's talk some, about that niche. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Who who would be the client who would speak for free? And as a follow-up question, why would they do that? Okay. Well, like my farmer, the reason why is because they get business. If they if they are blessing the audience with their expertise, let's say you're a chiropractor and you go out and you just educate people on back care, how to take care of your back. There are going to be a certain percentage of people that are going to hear that and they're going to realize, you know what, this guy's really got it going on. He knows his stuff. My brother-in-law has been complaining about his neck for the last three months. I'm going to tell him about this chiropractor, right? Or maybe maybe I now see and understand the value of getting a monthly tune-up with, you know, my, my alignment in my body. So you get clients as a result of it. So I, what I do is I am booking people who speak to rotary clubs to networking groups that are looking for business speakers. Uh, I work a lot with real estate professionals. You know, the, the, these are people in the real estate industry that they're always needing to up their game. They, they, they wanna be the best they possibly can. And they, they do that through continued education. So a lot of it is you go about it from the viewpoint of continued education, but you are you're establishing credibility when you do this and so that's how you can get clients as a result of it so that's been working great for me and my clients for quite some time and then march of 2020 happened <laughs> and then oh, everything i did was were, canceled you were booking people in physical locations yes like the every road. single uh -huh. one of them were in person Everyone, every wow. email I got in March of 2020 was a cancellation. So let's let's not cry too much because <laughs> we know what because happened. This is the best thing that could happen for me. <laughs> we know what happened. So how did you adjust? What what did you do? I embraced the pivot word of 2020, <laughs> and I started booking my grounded speakers on podcasts. So I had clients that had asked me if I would book them on podcasts. And I was like, nope, nope, don't have the bandwidth. That's another whole animal. I don't want to get involved in that. Anastasia, I'm I can't believe I can't speaking. believe you did that. I did, I did. <laughs> because it is, it is, they're similar and different at the same time. And they work really well together. I love it when people do both. So uh here I have all these clients that this is their marketing tool. So now their businesses are affected because they can't get out there and be promoting themselves through their speaking. So why not? Why not dip my toes into the podcast guesting world? Had no idea what I was doing at all. Just like I didn't know what I was doing with the speaking engagements. But I'm pretty creative and tenacious. So I just started reaching out to podcasts. And what I found was that I love the podcasting world. It's it 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 excites me kind of like the, the early Twitter days. It's like the wild, wild west. And I know it, that FOMO, I feel like I'm so late in the game already. I already feel late in the game. And yet I know better now 
you know, better that I jumped into it in March of 2020 than waiting until next year, right? Every day right. that goes by is one more day further along, and it just keeps growing. And but the podcasts best thing have really taken off in the last couple absolutely. of years. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. And they're evergreen. Yes. And that's one of the things I love. And so to anyone here who's listening that is going to be podcast guesting or already is and podcasters as well, remember the evergreen factor. So don't be talking about the workshop that you've got that you want to invite people to next month because they might be hearing it three years after the fact. So you want to be very cautious of, of the evergreen aspect of it. But one of the beauties is that you, <laughs> you you can be discovered at any time. So you start off on a show. Let's say someone discovers a new podcast. Let's say, let's say okay, anybody here right now that's listening to you, Joe, on your show, Espresso Jams, and this is their first time. If so, hello, welcome. Hello, welcome okay. to the show. <laughs> <laughs> Glad you're here with us. Assuming, hoping, expecting you to enjoy this. You're then going to be in the space of, ah, I wonder who else Joe has interviewed. Let me check out his previous shows. And you're going to scroll through and see what is of interest to you. And you might listen. I've done that. I, I did, did that, that this morning. I went, I found a new podcast. I like the guy. He talks about podcasts. And he had on his website, um, start here, check out our fan favorite shows. And he has uh -huh. over 300 shows. And there was, you know, episode 192, there was episode 220, episode 135 from two years ago, yeah. three years ago. And I, and I went through the list and I found those and I added them to my podcast list. That's awesome. That's I haven't awesome. listened so, to them yet. Just happened this morning. But you will. But I you will. will. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, that, I have, yeah. I have done it where I literally, actually, when I discovered Hal Elrod, he's my hero. He, no, I did this quite a few years back, but he had already been at it for a while. I literally went to episode 001 and just had a reverse play and just listened to every episode he did. So now, you know, if you're a guest, imagine that. If you're a guest, you're still being heard years, years after the fact. Later. And, you know, sometimes I'm glad you mentioned the evergreen because sometimes I will go to a podcast and I say, oh, that's so interesting. I want their free download. I want their list. I want mm -hmm. their PDF. And I get a 404 error. Yeah. And you know yep, what a 404 yep. error is? It's basically a broken <laughs> link. Yes, yes, yes. Be cautious in what you share and ideally stick with something that you know that you can maintain. So as a suggestion, if I might make that for your, you and your clients, just as, as or, or your uh, listeners, I do recommend that everybody have a, in essence, lead magnet page, a one page that you can take people to. So what normally happens with a podcast interview, and I'm sure you would be doing the same thing, is like, you know, towards the latter part, hey, Anastasia, so people want to get in touch with you. If they want to go further with you, how <laughs> can they, right? So some people, they go on and on and on. Well, they can find me here and they can find me there. Well, what about that person that's in commute traffic right now listening? Right. OK, right. how are they going to now? Yes, it's all going to be in the show notes, hopefully. OK, it also, will be. not every. OK, well, with you will be here on this show. I know that because <laughs> I vet my shows carefully, but there are shows that they do not share show notes or they're very limited or they're only promoting themselves, not their guests. I'm just going to say, but <laughs> you don't want to ask your listener to have to do that. Right. OK, because we're busy people. So just make it something easy to remember. So for me, I lead people to my business name. It's just accessspeakers.biz, B-I-Z, not .com, slash thank you. So if you just remember accessspeakers.biz slash thank you, anybody who goes in there is going to see Everything in one place. Everything. My in one offer place. for my my free ebook. Uh, if they want to do my free Q and A that I do on a monthly basis, if they want to follow me on or connect with me on LinkedIn. By the way, if anybody does, I would love to hear from you on LinkedIn. Please introduce yourself because I tend to not respond to people who don't take the time to say something to me as to why I should connect with them because I'm in it for relationships. 
So those all that in one place. So you have that one simple place that you lead people to. And it just makes it so much easier for everybody who is listening. Yes, it really does. And I I recently did that myself. I have one very simple link. It's Gapologist and everything is there. It will be evergreen. And if things change, because I own that, I will change it. Exactly. Exactly. You know, you can't like some people... Oh, some people, and I, I, no judgment at all, all the power to them. Some people will create a custom link for the show that they're on. So it would be like accessspeakers.biz slash espresso jams or right. Joe Matz or something like that. That would appear to give you more visibility. Okay. But the reality is that then I need to make well, and it helps with the marketing aspect because then now I know that it came through you, right? Right. But but that means that I need to maintain that website, that page forever. Yeah. And gazillions of them because yes. I do a lot of podcast guesting, right? I don't want that work. I don't want that responsibility. I want a simple life. I have one place. I can update it whenever I want. And as long as I have this business, I can't imagine why accessspeakers.biz slash thank you will not suffice. Perfect. And let's be honest, like it's not like I get a million people that sign up for my ebook and then I can't just reach out to them. Anytime somebody reaches out, if they sign up for my ebook, I reach out, I introduce myself, I say hello. Thank you. You know, so it's and then I ask him, where did you hear me? You know, just curious, which which podcast was it that you heard me on or which speaking engagement? So I don't need that real personalized, you know, backlink, if you will. And speaking of backlinks, that's another huge advantage of doing the podcast guesting. That digital footprint is off the hook. So when when people are being visible Every single time your name is out there attached to a podcast or a speaking engagement is going to help you be found. And that it adds up. It really does. It makes a huge difference. And so the the people when 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 the pandemic happened in the speaking world, you did have those that were like, woe is me. I'm going to eat my bonbons and watch my soap operas, if they even have them anymore. I don't know. I haven't had a television in 30 years. But the ones who were out there who said, you know what? I'll do virtual talks. I'll do podcasts. They are coming up on the top of search ranks now because their names are out there in that digital sphere. Right. The others got buried. Yeah, I mean, you've you've got to be out there. And and Mm podcast, one of the greatest things about podcasts is the backlinks. If you know about SEO, you know how important backlinks are. So, for example, this show here, when I put the show notes up, there are going to be backlinks from my website, from the podcasting apps, from the social media apps. I mean, this, this one interview will give you perhaps 20 backlinks. Yeah, yeah. Right. It's that good. Nice. I see you smiling there. Yeah, and, for those well, of you and, listening, <laughs> yeah, it's a you great. You are going to get back links because it's I'm going to share it. So, I'm a good guest. I'm the, I'm the kind of guest that I'm a giver. I'm going to be sharing about this on LinkedIn. That's that's my jam. I don't spend time on Facebook. I mean, I try not to go on Facebook, um, <laughs> Instagram, like Twitter. I've even gotten rid of my account, which I, I could kill myself for because I'm actually in a book about Twitter and and I deleted my account. So anyway, um, but I, I'm on LinkedIn a lot, but I will also share it in my e-newsletter. I will also share it with Innovation Women, which is an organization, an, a visibility platform for women speakers. If there's any women speakers out there that really want to do, you know, get your visibility, I'm telling you, this place is amazing, amazing community. But whenever I do anything, I can promote it through them and just say, hey, I just did this podcast. Here's a link to it. And they will include it in their email of where all their their um, community members have been speaking 
that goes out to over 18,000 people. Wow. So, yeah. so your show is going to be backlinked as well. So it's a, it's a win, win, win. It's a win, win. And you know what I like about that is, is I put a lot of effort into producing this show and putting it out there and promoting it. And you are going to do that also with this episode right. and it's a win, win. And I'm more likely to invite you back. Yay. <laughs> Accepted. <laughs> Accepted. <laughs> Gee, let me think. Do I really want to? Yes, I and, do. And that's Always. great because, you know, and, and some of the relationships I have today are because of guests that I've had on the show or I've been on their show and we can mm -hmm. just continue the relationship. And there's, yeah. there's a lot to talk about. I love what you do in helping speakers find the right podcast to be on yeah, where they can you. get the best ROI. You too. Yeah. And that's, I mean, we're both doing this. That's we're both awesome. Helping I've, got, people. I've got people I can recommend to you because not everyone wants to do that themselves. Not everyone has the time right. to do right. that themselves. Yeah. Is yeah. it the highest and best use of their time? That's, right. that's the key question. Does it actually make sense? And do they have the connections? Even if they hire a VA and, and, and that I, I highly recommend having VAs. I think that they're a great resource, but does your VA have a black book? Do they already have connections? Do they do they already know the industry and how to present someone in such a way to greatly increase their chances of actually getting them booked? So like I said, when I jumped into this, I didn't know what I was doing, but I fashioned it after the way I did my agency, the speaker agency bookings. So uh, what I do, even as a podcast booking agent, is different than any other agency I've come across. Right. And I love that because because we're all different. Yes. And and everybody loves everybody. And and there's no competition at all. You know, there, there are going to be some agencies that they're going to be a better fit for a client than I am. Sure. And I only take on people that I know I'm the right person for them. Because I, I I stand in integrity in everything that I do. The consulting that I do is where I can most help people because, because again, I have this, this eye, the eye of a speaker agent, a, a podcast booking agent. I see things differently huh. than a lot of the people who are out there doing the trainings and, and such. So when I consult with people, it's one-on-one. -on -one. You know, so I work with someone and I look at I looked at their LinkedIn profile. I looked at their email signature. I look at their one sheet, their website, you know, just kind of an airplane view. And I'm not a coach. I don't do it long term. Just just kind of touch into how they're showing up. And then I make suggestions. And I I love talking about best practices, things like making certain that you share doing a rating and review for the show, you know, uh, all, all these types of things I could go on and on and on about best practices to develop that relationship. Because if you and I connect, I, I have people that I can refer to you, you have people you can refer to me, and we just can learn from each other too. You know, there's just so much, so much to learn and, and, and experience and, yeah. and I, we all do it differently. I love what you say about there's, there's no competition. Because I think no. at, at a certain level, we're getting out there and mm -hmm. we're just exposing ourselves, making ourselves known. And by doing that, some people are going to resonate with us. Some yes. people are going to want more information. Others are going to say, you know what? I don't like this. I, I just, I mean, he looks like a great guy. See, sounds yeah. like a great guy. He's knowledgeable, but he just doesn't resonate with me at some level. I need to find someone else. And that's exactly. fine. Exactly. I'm fine exactly. with that because on the other side, there are people who are going to resonate with you, with me, yeah. with everyone out there. We just yeah. have to get out there and be authentic <laughs> and be ourselves. Yes, I love that. Yeah. And pay attention. You know, so what you're saying is so spot on, paying attention to your gut. Yeah. I think we forget how how intuitive we as beings are. And when I was, you know, getting back to that idea of listening to a show before you approach it, as part of the vetting process, I highly encourage that for a lot of reasons. One, so that you can be a better guest when you're actually talking to the host. It allows you also to be able to do an authentic review of the show. Um, 
but more than anything, pay attention to how you feel about that host, how they roll. Sometimes a person's voice just bothers you and you have no idea why. You know, maybe they, they're, 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 in the back of your mind, there's some trauma from your third grade teacher who was really mean to you and they sound just like that person. Or maybe they sound like an ex or or you don't like the way the host kind of talks over people or maybe they talk too fast or they talk too slow and it drives you nuts. you got to pay attention to that. The benchmark that I always suggest when a person's betting a show, when you're listening, Ask yourself, would I like to sit at a cafe and have a cup with this person? Uh. That's important because if you don't jive with them, it's going to be noticeable to the listeners. Right. So you and I, we can have conversation. This feels comfortable because you're the kind of person that I can jive with. Okay. We, I feel like we can connect. And I knew that even just from listening to you. But if I went about it just because I wanted to be on your show, but I kind of didn't really like you very much, or I just, did, you know, didn't have a, a really groovy feeling, this conversation, there would be an energy block. Yes. yes. And you can, people can feel it. Like, it just feels like a strained conversation. And that's what podcasts are. They are conversations. Your guy, oh my gosh, what's his name? He's in Australia, but he sounds like he's from Austria or Germany. He had the, he's the chef. You interviewed him. Yes. Uh, and he got conversation. He talked about conversations. Uh, are, are, conversations are in every business connection that you make. Right. And that, and so he he teaches people about how to, how to help them with building their podcast. Oh my gosh. I'm not yes, going to And that was just a few episodes ago, maybe six or seven episodes ago. Do you know how every conversation in your biz starts with conversations? That's what he said. Anyway, every I'm sale, every sale name. starts with a conversation. Yes, yes, yes. So it's so true. It, it's about conversation. But if you yeah. don't have that good conversation, you're not going to have the sale and it's going to feel strained. Right. So, yeah. And yeah. just so you know, uh, I would have a cup of coffee with you anytime. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. A little cup of espresso. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> <sighs> yeah. I might do decaf if it's after two o'clock. So hey, they, they make right. decaf espresso. Oh, yeah, I do. it. I, I love I when I when I go out for dinner, I love to have a decaf cappuccino. In fact, I just got off a cruise. And every night I would have my decaf cappuccino and then I would actually touch the waiter's arm and look them in the eye and say, please, for the love of all things holy, make it decaf. <laughs> because I have had yes. <laughs> caffeine at night and it's no fun. <laughs> and they would always be like, yes, ma'am, I promise. And then when they would give it to me, they'd say decaf. Oh, thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> you have to be very clear. We're speaking about communication. Yes. <laughs> you, must, you must be very clear. Yes. Yes. Anastasia, this this is a great conversation. I am enjoying this so thank much. You. But we're coming to the end. All oh. good things come to an end. Yes. But before we go, I would ask you, what one thing, maybe an action step, or one thing that you would like to leave our listeners with today? The one thing, one important thing, the one important thing is to remember that you have a voice. If you have a message, whatever it might be, if it's a message that can benefit the world and you're not sharing it, you're doing the world a disservice. So just get out there, whatever it might take, whether it be writing, whether it be speaking, whether it be getting on, uh, you know, uh, a podcast, being interviewed, just use your voice because the world is blessed from hearing other people and their stories and their experiences. That's how we learn. That's how we yes. grow. And we don't want to hold that back from anybody else. So I believe in using the power of your voice. And I just want to encourage anyone who's listening right now to use theirs. Yes. Get out there and just start. You know, we all have a start somewhere. 
And yep. you're listening to Anastasia, who, who's been speaking for decades, and she's refined and it's, she's elegant in her speech. If you have not been speaking in front of people for decades, you're going to be like Anastasia was 20 or 30 years ago. <laughs> you're yep. going to start where you are and you improve yes. as you go. Exactly. Yeah. Great. So how can Pete, the famous question, you've answered this uh -huh. before in, dun, dun, in, dun, dun, in the dun. conversation. <laughs> I know. How can people get in touch with you and, and learn more? All right. Well, I'm going to make it easy. I have one place you can go for everything to contact me. Access speakers.biz slash thank you. And in there, you'll have my contact information. I love to connect with people on LinkedIn. If you let me know that you heard me here, then that gives me an opportunity to come back to Joe and say, yay, guess what? <laughs> and, and then also I do have a free ebook on using to grow your business. I'm you can sorry, get using, that by signing up. You're speaking to using grow speaking your business. To grow mm -hmm. your business. And that'll be yes. in your one single awesome link of accessspeakers.biz. Slash thank you. Oh, slash thank you. And that will be that whole entire link, Everything. including the oh, slash thank you. All one there. It just makes it so easy. <laughs> that will be and, that. and at the very least, everybody go there to see what I did. Because I want everyone else who is out there doing podcast guesting or speaking, have your own page. Yeah. It is a hidden page. It's not, a, it's not, nobody's going to find that when they go to my website I don't have my thank you page visible. So it's it's published, but it's hidden. So someone has to have the link in order to access it. Oh, so they have, if they're listening to the show, they have exclusive access. They're special. It. Very yes. special. Very yes. good. They, they certainly are. They certainly are. <laughs> well, they are. If they're still here, they're special. <laughs> so thank you. Thank you to anyone who's still listening, because I suspect, hopefully, most of you are, because... Joe's got a great show, and I, I've been listening to your show, and you do have really wonderful guests. Yes. That, well, thank you very much. I appreciate that. And I appreciate everyone who's listening to this show. So keep in touch. Let us know. Oh, Give yes. us a review. Give Anastasia a review. Go to her. You know, just, just do what you feel like doing, folks. Share the love. Share, Share the, the love. love. That's right. <laughs> thank you very much. Thank We're going to sign off right now. All and right. Say goodbye. All right. Goodbye. Bye, Have everyone. a beautiful day. Bye-bye, all. Thank you for listening to Espresso Jams. If you like what you heard, please subscribe on your preferred channel. Never miss another episode. If you'd like more business tips on technology, entrepreneurship, and doing better, you can find me on LinkedIn at Joe Matz, that's J-O-E-M-A-T-Z, or go to my website, apexable.com, that's apex dash able.com. I'm your host, Joe Matz, wishing you an awesome day.